Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. My website is paulbeckwith.net. Please have a look at it. Right now, a lot of the world is focused on the Amazon rainforest and the massive fires there that are um, along with you know deforestation, slash and burn techniques, and fires that are that are threatening this carbon sink of our planet. You know, we often talk about the Amazon rainforest as the lungs of the planet. What I want to do in this video and probably the next few is discuss to the best of my knowledge, you know, how much oxygen is produced by the Amazon rainforest, how much carbon is absorbed, um, and, uh, you know, what will be the significance of losing this carbon sink if, we, if the Amazon rainforest tips from a rainforest to savanna. So some of the best numbers that I've seen come from this guy, Yadvinder Malhi. Okay, so, you know, in a subsequent video, I'll talk about his, the exact details of what he says. But in summary, um, tropical forests account for about 34% of terrestrial global photosynthesis. The Amazon is about is just less than half of that number, um, or about 16 percent. Now we measure uh, global primary productivity to figure out the, you know, the amount of vegetation mass that is produced on the planet from growth. You know how many, how much carbon, how many grams of carbon are removed from the atmosphere per square meter by this growth. We talk about, you know. When we talk about the, the total amounts, we're on the scale of petagrams of carbon or 10 to the 15th grams of carbon, which is equivalent to a gigaton of carbon. Now, if we multiply that number by, by 2.67, and you get 2.67 by taking the molecular weight of, of O2, which is 32, um, divide that by the molecular weight of carbon, which is 12, and you get that ratio 2.67. So we can get the petagrams of oxygen that are produced. So the total oxygen production by land photosynthesis is about 330 petagrams of oxygen. Okay, this is, this is uh, yearly numbers. The Amazon is about 16% of this, and, and that's where that 20% number comes from, but that's produced just on, by terrestrial photosynthesis. That's not including the oceans, okay? So the oceans, I'll talk about that in a minute. So the Amazon is about 16% of the 330 petagrams of oxygen, which is about 54 petagrams of oxygen being produced. Now, the phytoplankton in the oceans produce a total of 240 petagrams of oxygen. So the total global photosynthesis will be the land component, which is a 330 petagrams of oxygen, adding the 240 petagrams of oxygen from the ocean for a total of 570 petagrams of oxygen. So 57% of that is from the land and 43% roughly is from the oceans. Now of the land component, um, 16% is from the Amazon rainforest, so that puts it, um, you know, that 54 petagrams of oxygen from the Amazon divided by the 570 uh, for the total global photosynthesis, and that's 9.5%. So basically, that uh, the amount of um, oxygen that the Amazon rainforest produces on a global scale is 9.5%, and that does include the oceans. It's 16% of what's produced on land, or 9.5% of the global total, land plus oceans. Now, a couple key things are from 1990 to now, the CO2 level has gone up in the atmosphere about 10%, or 37 parts per million. Oxygen has declined 0.005 we don't have to worry about running out of oxygen. If the entire Amazon rainforest burned down, atmospheric CO2 would rise 
from today's levels about 10% or about 40 parts per million. Okay, that, that, show, that basically is a release of 90 petagrams of carbon. Um, if you multiply that by 2.67, that's 240 petagrams of oxygen used up, which is 0.02% of the total amount of oxygen in the atmosphere. So even if the whole thing burns, we're not going to run out of oxygen. But the key thing is, is, you know, you know, if the Amazon burned, we would, the CO2 levels in the atmosphere would go up about 40 parts per million. Now it's rising between two and three parts per million now. So that, that would be 20 years at the outset, um, 13 years, um, if it was three ppm per year. So basically 30 to 20 years of global emissions rise um, is about the equivalent of that 40, 40 ppm. So this is a huge number. There's no way we can be anywhere close to the thresholds agreed in Paris, you know, if we lose the Amazon rainforest. It's a very, very important sink for our planet. Now, how much carbon is captured by the Amazon rainforest? Well, we said we calculated it in terms of oxygen. So 9.5 percent of the, the t so of the total photosynthesis on land and in the oceans, um, the Amazon's responsible for about 9.5% of the oxygen produced. So therefore, it will be responsible for about 9.5% of the carbon captured by all of the vegetation in the land and the sea, the same sort of number. So we're talking about a critical region of the world that we cannot afford to, to, to lose. It's, it's vital for, um, for the balance of the climate system on this planet. Okay, so let's get right into the um, let's get right into the presentation, and I'll those numbers I wanted to throw out to you before I did anything else, and I'll revisit them, showing you the actual um, writings from Yadvinder Malhi, which I believe are the most are, are accurate. Okay, so here's the Amazon rainforest. So these are global warming vulnerable tipping points. Okay, we know about the Arctic sea ice loss that will leave, you know, when Arctic sea ice is gone in the summers, that will leave Greenland exposed. So that's another tipping point. Boreal forests here, permafrost, huge emissions. The jet stream is slowing and becoming wavier, causing extreme weather. Another tipping point, methane clathrates, uh, monsoons, um, Sahara greening, Sahel drying. Um, the coral reefs, we know that we've lost tremendous amounts of coral reefs, West Antarctic ice sheet, and so on. Now, this, um, this image is from the Climate Emergency Institute. You know, one of my colleagues, Peter Carter, has put together this site, and it's actually based, so this is the image I'm showing you, and it's an update from um, this image from the Potsdam Institute, Hans Schellenhuber and Timothy Lenton. Okay, so that's where the um, that's where the image is coming from. So the Amazon rainforest is very vulnerable to tipping because if we lose too much of the rainforest, that basically water is recycled. The water coming here is is um, fall, falls on the Amazon rainforest. There's, there's transpiration, so it goes up, creates clouds, falls again, falls again, falls again, falls again. So it's recycled many times through the rainforest. So if we lose too much of the rainforest and that water recycling halts, then the whole thing can very, very quickly tip over into savanna and uh, become, you know, basically there'll be an enormous mass of um, carbon released up into the atmosphere, which will, which, so it's definitely a very strong tipping point of vulnerability in our overall climate system. Just a reminder, um, this is my website, paulbeckwith.net, and please consider donating to allow me to, uh, you know, to basically put together all of these videos and try to, you know, inform you of the latest science and the risks and so on. So my last few videos were all about browning Earth since 1998, based on a recent study, including atmospheric 
drying. And um, I would like to point out that I did come across a study that was arguing based on leaf area index that the earth was, was actually still greening since 2000. So this is an area um, that is still um, in contention um, in, uh, you know, in science. Okay, uh, to find uh, this image, I just googled tipping elements in the Earth's climate system, and this seemed to be the best one that I can find, leading me to, um, leading me to the Climate Emergency Institute, which is my colleague Peter Carter's website, leading me to talk about you know this this image. So let's look at basically social media for a bit. So this is my Twitter feed at Paul H Beckwith, and these are the videos I did on browning of the earth, but there's all kinds of stuff on the fires in the Amazon rainforest and on the politics and so on. Okay, so make sure you have a look at my, um, my uh, main Twitter feed. Okay, um, I do want to point out, you know, everybody's tracking the sea ice and this is the sea ice extent, the daily change, and you can see how it's really, really tapered off here and have to look at the reasons of this. Um, one of the things that's interesting is as we lose more and more sea ice, the sea ice get, is basically just concentrated around the pole. There's very little around the land areas which are much lower latitude. So as you go closer and closer to the pole, of course, the angle of the sun is more glancing and basically, you know, it's colder up there. So you know, just the geometry of the sun means that, you know, maybe the ice will stick around for a bit in the central Arctic Ocean, uh, maybe because of that simple geometry effect. But that's, you know, a topic of another video or other ne negative feedbacks. You know, again, if you go on Twitter and look at Amazon, you know, hashtag search, ha hashtag Amazon rainforest, you get all kinds of, uh, you know, stuff on images and there's all kinds of information. I mean, this is one of the best ways to get information. Or if you look at um, fires, look at the hashtag fires, like this is comparing August 2018 to August 2019, you know, and look at all of these points, you know, points where, where there's fires. I mean, basically what's happening is, you know, I read that not, something like 99% of these fires are basically being caused by, by, harmer, by farmers, by people, by foresters and farmers. They go in with trucks and chains and they pull down trees over a fairly large area. They let the wood dry out for a while and, and whether they can't stack it or whatever, and then they burn it. And, uh, you know, they had actually had a fire day where they were celebrating the burning and the present government does not recognize the importance of the Amazon rainforest on a global scale, you know, being, uh, you know, being denying the uh, denying climate change. Um, so anyway, this is, the, these are, you know, rather than a rainforest, I mean, it's hard to set the rainforest on fire. You know, if you pull down all the trees, let them dry out a bit and then set them on fire, then, then, then it's, they'll burn like crazy. And this is really what's happening in these points. It's not actually pristine rainforest burning. It's the sl trees that have been slashed down you know, dried out and are then set on fire and burned. So this is a, this is a, a human, a human uh, issue. Okay, um, if you go to Earth Null School, a um, couple things I want to point out are, first of all, you know, if you go to chemistry and carbon monoxide, this is what you see here. This is at present. You go back a day, so you can see the variation here. This is carbon monoxide being produced. It's produced by incomplete combustion. So you can see the extent here of all the CO being produced from day to day. Um, I'll go back, uh, you know, so this is the date, August 20th, 19th, 18th, 17th, 16th. Now, now before the 16th, okay, there wasn't, there was burning, but there wasn't so much compared to previous years. Okay, we'll just keep going back. You can see what's happening. So these fires, you know, be, the timing is it's a dry season. The fires are being set, and uh, basically they're uh, they're they're burning um, when the wood's dried out. I'll continue. Thanks for listening.